It is very rare that we're gonna be posting our videos to a single social channel. Nowadays, we have YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. We spend so much time editing our vlogs, tutorials. Why would we not post it on every social channel that we could? Your new YouTube video could be advertised on Instagram, on Instagram stories, on TikTok, on Facebook. They are all very different demographics. So in order to do this, we have to crop our videos into different aspect ratios according to the platform that we are posting on. Now that we know how to render and export our videos so that when we upload them, they don't look like garbage. Today, specifically, we are gonna take my new YouTube video. I mean, I guess it's not new because I already posted it before. Today, we're gonna take one of my YouTube videos and I'm gonna show you how I cropped it for Instagram in Adobe Premiere Pro. Our phones are now optimized for vertical viewing, which means our beautiful wide videos are taking up very little screen space, like literally a fraction of what they would take up had they been cropped. If the physical size of your video in your post is, you know, three to four times bigger, that means you have that much more chance of catching somebody's attention. It's unfortunate, but it's true. We need to adjust to the crop of these platforms. So let's talk about the different aspect ratio crops. For the most part, in most cameras like this camera, you're gonna be recording in either 4K or 1080p. Either way, it's the exact same crop. It is a 16 by nine ratio. But a lot of ads and a lot of viral content is now cropped to a one by one, which is a square. Despite having theoretically less surface area, it takes up way more of a vertical screen. Now with Instagram, we can push that crop a little bit more. And instead of a one to one ratio, we can crop it to a four by five ratio so that we get a little bit more out of our screen. And then of course, for our Instagram stories and our TikToks, that is a nine by 16 crop. Now, if you would like to take a second, pause the screen and take a screenshot. Today, not only are we gonna go over the best way to crop our videos, but also how to adjust our videos for the crop to adjust our effects and how to export these videos in order to maintain the best possible quality before we go post it. This is my new video coming out. I'll hit play for you real quick. I love it so much. It looks so good on a widescreen, but do you need to get the word out on Instagram so that people can get a teaser what this full video is. In the description, I have put a link to the PDF document for this tutorial, but I've also put links to the recommendations and the upload requirements of different social channels. Although this video is going to be cropped for an Instagram post, this method is the exact same if we wanna make a TikTok video, a Instagram story, or even a square video. The only thing that's gonna change is the pixel number that we type in in a few seconds. Let's say that this was my final sequence for the entire video. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to our sequence and we're gonna right click and click duplicate. Next, we're gonna change the name to four by five and we can put IG in the bracket. Let's go ahead and open up that sequence now. So the first step to this process is going up to our sequence settings. So we're gonna go and we're gonna open those up and make sure your editing mode is in custom. If it's anything else, probably not gonna let you change your aspect ratio. And all we have to do is go here, and change our frame size to whatever we are looking to post that. So for an Instagram post, we're gonna change this to 1080 and 1350. As you can see, our aspect ratio has changed from 16 by nine to four by five. And then we're gonna go down and click okay. And there we go. Our footage does not look like it should. There are a few gaps either on the top or the bottom, depending on how you scale your footage and how you reposition it. So we're gonna have to adjust pretty much every single clip. I'm gonna drag in this pink clip here. This is as small as your clips are gonna be. This is about the size of your clips if you have not done any adjusting to them. And that's just not gonna work. We don't want those weird black bars in our video. And one thing I wanna note here, as you can see, I had warp stabilizer on this clip, but unfortunately it's not gonna work anymore because our aspect ratio has changed. So a fair warning, there are a few different effects such as warp stabilizer that will not work unless your footage is set to the exact same aspect ratio as your current sequence. So if you have a bunch of warp stabilized clips, that last step we just did is going to mess all of that up. So in order to work around that, we are going to need to nest our clips beforehand. Once our clip is warp stabilized, all we wanna do is right click, go to nest and name it warp two. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna change our sequence settings, 1080 by 1350 or 1080 by 1080 or 1080 by 1920. And then we're gonna hit okay. And as you can see, it is totally fine. Now, trust me, you wanna nest the clip before you change your sequence settings because now you have the entire width of your clip. Whereas if you were to crop it after you change your settings, you would be stuck with a square that you can't change. The nest is based off of the current sequence settings. We click into this, you can see our nest is a 1920 by 1080 clip. Whereas if we nest it now, 
our nest is now going to be a four by five nest. So it's important to make sure you do that before you get into changing your sequence settings. I would also recommend if you have any intense transitions that have a ton of rescaling and repositioning, probably best that you nest those before changing your sequence settings. As you can tell, we're gonna have to change a lot of these clips. We're gonna have to resize most of them and at least reposition the majority of them. If you are editing 4K footage and you've cut down to this, your clips might look like this one where they're insanely <laughs> scaled in. That's okay. I'm going to show you how to work around that as well. This can get really messy. If you've done a lot of repositioning, rescaling, rotation, etc., this could be a very daunting task. Now we're going to have to adjust the majority of the keyframes that we have made in this project so far. Or do we? There are three ways that we can simplify this process for us. The first way that we can get around this would be to nest every single clip that we have here. You have a transition, nest the whole transition, whether it's two or three clips together. All of your values are gonna be set to 100% scale and repositioned to be the exact center. Now again, I would nest those in the previous sequence before you change your aspect ratio. The only reason that is the first option is because it's really fast to say. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing that for every single one of your clips, which brings us to our second method. This is a very simple and effective way to change the scale of all of your clips at the exact same time. Now to do this, all we have to do is go over to our project window and create a new adjustment layer. Make sure the video settings of the adjustment layer now match our current sequence. There's a chance they might still be at 1920 or 1080. So as we can see, this fits proper. And now let's drag our adjustment layer down here. We're gonna expand our adjustment layer and we're gonna go up to our effects and type in transform. So now here we have transform. We're gonna drag that onto our adjustment layer. You can change the color of this or here, we'll just change the color of the LUT. This blue one is just a color grade. And this is our transform. Now, I don't know if you've tried this before, but if you go to an adjustment layer and if you change the scale property, essentially just changing how big the adjustment layer is. It doesn't affect the scale of anything underneath it. That is where this transform effect comes in super handy. Now, we're gonna drag this pink cube back in for a reference and let's go to our transform and we are going to adjust the scale. So as you can see, at exactly 125% scale, your clips will be at least as big as your sequence. If you like math, it makes a lot of sense because you know, it's a four by five ratio. That extra 25% is actually, you know, five fourths math. And now as you can see, all of our clips are scaled and there are no more borders around them. And that only took a few seconds. Now, if this was a 4K sequence, we're actually gonna have to scale our clips down. Unfortunately, transform tool is not going to save us. As soon as we drag our scale below 100%, it actually creates a border around every single clip. It will not fix our 4K clips for us. So I'm just gonna undo that. The trick that I find for working with 4K clips in this sequence, all we have to do is divide the scale in two. So 110 now becomes 55. It is cropped exactly for how I needed it, or as if it was just a 1080p clip. And that's how we're gonna work around our 4K clips. So your best bet if you're working with 4K clips is either to divide the scale in half or nest the clip before you bring it in to the 1080p sequence. And that way, when you divide the scale in half, it's a very easy calculation and you won't have to redo all of your repositioning and scaling and property changes, essentially. So add that to the list of nested clips. Either way, once you have your transform tool up here, we can go to our clips and we can make sure they're positioned exactly how we want them. I'm gonna bring up my safe margins. This clip, for instance, is slightly off center and it's a lot more noticeable. This clip of the drone shot could be brought into the center a little bit more. So there might be a few clips that you need to adjust accordingly. So now you're just gonna go through and you're gonna reposition your clips based on how you want them. When I'm making a widescreen video, I might position some shots way out to the right or way out to the left, depending on the crop. But I know on Instagram and like in this aspect ratio, a lot of things look better in the center. And a third and final way to go about this is to export a very high resolution quality of our first edit, whether it was 4K or 1080p, and simply drag that in. This is essentially like nesting your entire work sequence, except it's already slightly compressed. But what we could do is just set the scale size to 125% again. And then we can match all of the cuts that we've made throughout our video by lining those up as we can see in the sequence. And then we could readjust accordingly. So you can either nest your entire sequence or you can use this method. The advantage to this is now that you have a rendered and exported file, 
it will have the keyframing, color grading, effects, all compressed into the edit already. So you won't have to worry about that. Alternatively, you can nest your entire sequence and then render that. But this is just a different workaround for that. But again, you have to make sure you export your video properly the first time, like a ProRes. You're not 100% sure how to do that. We have a video that it's entirely based on how to render effectively. So you can go check that out. Now, whatever method you've decided to go with, we will have to adjust our clip properties anyway and reposition them into the center. You can use the safe margins. That's always super helpful. I'm gonna delete this exported one. Cut this 4K clip in half. Awesome. So now that we've adjusted every single clip to look exactly how we want it, we are ready to export our video finally. So let's go up to the top, file, export media. This would be a great time to go back and check those upload requirements and recommendations for whatever platform you're hoping to post this on. That way we can avoid a ton of compression on our video and we can maintain the highest possible quality. Remember, every website has a different compression algorithm, which means they compress them differently. They all have different requirements, now, if you already knew how to crop your video and you've uploaded your videos before and they just do not look nearly as good as what they did when you first exported them, there are a few methods to work around the compression algorithms. For instance, I know a few people who would drag in an adjustment layer on top and then in Lumetri color, go down to the creative tab and add a bunch of sharpening and then a bit of vibrance. I noticed that on a cell phone, a video with a lot of contrast looks a lot better. I highly recommend making sure you set your bitrate for your upload requirements. So if we go back up to export, there's no chance we're gonna be able to upload a QuickTime video to Instagram. We're gonna have to go with an H.264 video. And as you can see, our estimated file size is 33 megabytes. In order to fix that, we're gonna go to our bitrate settings here, and we're gonna go to two pass. And we're gonna change our target bitrate to be a little bit smaller to shrink our file size. Now to compensate for that, we can increase our max bit rate. VBR 2 pass is used for situations like this where you need to keep a small file size but if you have any very complex scenes that will be compensated by the higher maximum bit rate. Now make sure you check off maximum render quality especially when you're either scaling up or down footage this is going to be a big help and we can essentially just hope that it won't compress our video further. I'm gonna rename this really quick and then we can just export our file. Or what I've done in the past is export my video at full quality and then I compressed it. So you can either do that by opening your file in QuickTime, clicking on export as 720p, or there are multiple online converters where you can upload your video. It will compress it for web and then you can re-download it. Or there are even applications you can download to do this for you. Another way I've heard is if you upload your video to Google Drive and you post your video from Google Drive, it should help with the compression algorithm. Don't know how true that one is. But either way, we have our video, we have it compressed you know we have it within the requirements for upload so finally airdrop that to your phone or upload and download to your phone however android and pc users transfer their videos dropbox and if you're going to be uploading this video from your phone if you don't have a plugin to upload your videos from your desktop make sure you are on strong wi-fi and especially if you're uploading to facebook from your phone you have to go into your settings and literally change the upload in high definition our phones automatically want to save as data so they upload a lower resolution quality video in hopes to help us but really our mobile settings usually restrict a higher resolution upload on cellular data so it's really important to make sure you are on Wi-Fi when uploading your videos and there you go I really hope that helped you if you are posting anywhere else it is the exact same method it's just a different aspect ratio for what you are editing in you just need to change the aspect ratio and crop in your sequence settings smash subscribe if this was helpful comment any questions you have and I will see you around